Well, that was unexpected. Let's talk about the event loop. Uh, this is Node.js, uh, JavaScript. This is the uh, same for Node or in the browser. It's, uh, it's all a single thread bound by an event loop that just schedules things to execute. And not many people I've actually talked to who are programming in JavaScript understand what that means. And so I decided to try to make a screencast to explain that. So first off, we've got this program, 125.js. And what we're going to do is all we have is a function to uh, print out the elapsed time since the program started and a message. And we're going to set three timeouts, uh, one at 1,000 milliseconds, 2,000, and 5,000. And it's going to print 1, 2, 5. So we'll I'll run this program, node125.js, go. And as expected, one, two, five. All right, and the times that they happen, 1,000 milliseconds, 2,000 milliseconds, 5,000 milliseconds. That all makes sense, but how did that actually happen? Come here, come here. All right, let's go through this really quickly. So we've got our event loop in Node, and we also have a scheduler, which is um, the operating system or libuv v8. It, it's the magical thing behind Node that uh, gets things in the proper place and order for your application. You don't you don't have to worry about it. You know that you set a timeout for 1,000 milliseconds, and when 1,000 milliseconds from now happens, that uh, code is going to execute. So our event loop. As soon as we start our program, we're executing 125, and we have our code block, and all of this is going to run to completion at the end um, before the event loop uh, passes control to anything else. So it's going to set three timeouts, and that's going to go over to the scheduler saying at uh, t equals 1000, t equals 2000, we're going to do these different functions. But until that happens, we're at uh, time one through nine nine nine. We're just gonna no up. We've, we've got nothing to do. We're just we're just sitting here. But as soon as one thousand hits, we're going to actually have something come over from the scheduler onto our event loop, and we're going to execute it. Then we'll go back to being a no op, but we uh, we we executed, and the scheduler still has stuff to wait for us, so we're going to stick around and no op until time equals 2000. When we get that next function, we execute it, no op until 5000, execute it, and node sees that our event loop is no oping, our scheduler has nothing for us, and so it exits. And that is how this program ran. So what happens if we throw in an infinity. So it's the same program we had before. Um, we've got to set timeouts, but in the second timeout, we've got this extra line while true, do nothing. It's just going to sit there while true, it's going to be doing nothing. What, what happens? So it says one, two, and nothing else happens because right now as this is executing it is just still executing this block executing over and over this while true and the scheduler or the uh, the uh, event loop it has the uh, callback that's let's, let's run through this really quick and show you what's happening here uh, Line zero. Yeah, so starting off very much the same. We're running through our entire program. We're setting all our timeouts. So our schedule now has the elapsed for one, two, and five. It's going to come over to time equals 1000. And we're going to print elapsed one. We get that on the output. It's going to come over to time equals 2000. First, it's going to print elapsed two. And then it's going to while true. And so we get our output, but this is still on the event loop. It's still executing, executing, executing right here in this while loop. And the scheduler eventually does put this print five on the event loop, but the event loop is never finished with this block. It executes in order of things that are pushed onto it. And so it's continuing to execute our uh, our block here. And it never gets to print elapsed five because it's, it never finishes this block. 
So that is what happens with infinity. I've got one more example with this, and it is long. So instead of infinity, in uh, the first time out, we're going to just count from uh, zero to, uh, what is that, one billion? Um, and that should take some time, but it will, it's not infinity, it will, ex it will execute. Now one, two, five, long. So here we go, go. One at 1,000 milliseconds. Pausing, pausing, two happens at, what, the uh, 3,800? And that's because one, even though um, this set timeout at 2,000 milliseconds, it was pushed onto the event loop. It was pushed onto the event loop at time equals 2,000. It wasn't done finishing the prior block until 3.8 seconds went by. And then, of course, two executed really, really quickly, and by the time five got pushed onto the event loop, it, uh, it was ready to execute right as soon as it went onto the event loop, and so five happens at five seconds. But two happens uh, 1.8 seconds behind when it should have happened because it was busy processing one. Which leads us to a real-time example, or a real-world example. So this is the example from the node.js.org website. It's just the uh, create server. We'll launch that node www.js. Server running on localhost. Local delete. Hello world. Great. Um, yeah, not too fancy. What we're going to do now is we're going to add um, a timeout to that. So instead of immediately responding hello world, we're going to respond after one second with hello world. We're also going to console log um, just setting timeout for this request so we can have something to view that things are working. No, www long. All right, let's open up some new browsers for this. And what we want to show is things happening concurrently. Actually, let's kill this so we get a new screen. All right. Just so it's easy to see when things actually execute. And I'm just going to go through and uh, refresh each of these. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Oh, I, I think I executed the wrong one. I executed long. This is not the right code. Timeout is what we're running. We got a sneak peek. All right, so we're back. Um, no time timeout. This is the code again. We are getting the server, and after a timeout of one second, we are sending the request. So we'll hit these refresh, refresh, refresh. Dun dun dun. So you notice, even though we sent uh, three requests pretty much at the same time, they they came back pretty much also at the same time. Even though it each it took them individually one second to process, they all came back at the same time. Now we'll go back and I did the spoilers by doing long. Um, we'll just get that on deck. I'll show you the code first. So we're borrowing the uh, count code. So this is going to, uh, uh, I don't need the, that's, that's wrong. There, there we go. So all we're going to do is uh, do some processing, some heavy processing that's going to take some time before we actually send the request end. And uh, what the difference is between this and uh, the long is, it's not going to feel as concurrent. Um, we'll run this now, actually. No. We'll uh, refresh these, and then we'll run this so we can know. All right, I'm going to refresh. Boom, boom, boom. So one's done. Two's done, and then uh, three's done, and that was very, very bad performance. Note it's supposed to be badass rockstar tech, it's supposed to be very, very fast, but it's only fast if you're not doing much processing. It is a great orchestrator, but as soon as you need to do processing that takes lots of time and is going to be hogging the thread, the, the event loop for a long period of time. Nothing else can execute. So if you're planning on handling many things at once, you need to be handling many things at once 
in very, very, very small chunks. You need to be doing as little as possible in small chunks so that you can handle many things at a time. Um, if you're running a large process, if you're doing lots of processing, it's going to make everybody else wait for that processing to be finished before they can have a chance at being on the event loop to process. So what that means actually for real world um, web servers is avoid, 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 avoid anything with sync in the name. Um, I've seen that mistake too many times. It is convenient and nice to have a, uh, your variables without having to use a callback, but it is not the naughty way. And uh, unless you know what you're doing, do not use sync in your, your functions. Another thing that people don't realize, JSON, parse, stringify, if you have large objects, that function takes time. And if you're scaling up to a large number of users, that could actually be a significant amount of time that you're blocking for 30, 40, 50, 100 milliseconds. Just processing one piece of JSON to parse or stringify it, and that is making everyone else wait until that is done for this one request. Um, and that's just the same for long calculations. If part of your code that you're serving is uh, doing long calculations, you just have to realize that you have the full CPU. You, no one else does while you have it. And uh, that's a trade-off of Node. So um, that's the event loop. Give me feedback. Now, how do I end this?